Do you have ongoing elevations in your vitamin B12 level? Maybe you're having a lot of concern about whether or not you might have cancer or some other bone marrow problem. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to go into some of those risks, specifically going to look at what are the most common types of cancer that are associated with elevated B12. The relative amount of B12 in the blood does suggest the relative amount of transcombinants. So for instance, with chronic myeloid leukemia, you might have B12 levels that are 10 times the normal level. According to this paper that we're going to look at here in just a second, some of the testing and strategies you might want to consider when you have this going on, as well as some ways to look at it and understand what's going on in your body when you have ongoing elevated B12 levels. So this video, like all my videos, I make to help you go beyond basic health, but it's not tailored specifically to your unique needs. So please read this medical disclaimer before we get into the details of the video. So high B12 on a blood test is not something that most people should or need to worry about. As I've said in previous videos, most of the time it's occurring because you're taking a B12 supplement in some shape or form. Maybe it's a multivitamin or it could be a vitamin drink or energy drink with B12 in it. Problem is what happens when that's not the case? What happens, for instance, when you haven't taken any B12 in years, either in the form of injection or oral or even vitamin drinks? That's when you want to make sure you don't have something more serious going on like cancer. And that's what I'm dedicating this video to discussing, sort of the worst case scenario type things. Now, I hesitate to make a video like this because in the vast majority of people, it's high for some benign reason. And a video like this may create unnecessary fear. Still, I think the opposite perspective can also be used. What if it helps someone get a diagnosis earlier? So with that, let me share some finer points about this topic. Let me first quickly start by mentioning the benign reasons for high B12. And they are you're either taking vitamin B12, there's some genetic reason that you have elevated B12, either with the transcobalamin molecules or other genetic aspects, and then some not so benign reasons like problems with your liver, kidney, or even solid tumors in these organs. It's usually pretty straightforward to get your kidney and liver checked and to check to make sure you're not taking B12. After this, though, what is the next step? What are you going to do? Well, it really depends how long it's been high for and how high it actually is. Each case would have to be looked at on an individual basis. So here I'm attempting to give you a little more context on this topic so you can decide along with your healthcare provider when it's time to dig a little bit deeper and see, for instance, a hematologist. In the last video on high B12 or elevated B12, we discussed that B12 is carried throughout our bodies via three carrier proteins known as transcobalamins. They're made in the liver and they can also be made in white blood cells called granulocytes. These types of white blood cells increase in conditions like mast cell activation syndrome, massocytosis, and white blood cell cancers. In all these cases, it can lead to more of the proteins that bind B12 or transcobalamins, less of the B12 getting into the cell and more floating around in your blood, thus spiking the test. So if you have ongoing high levels of B12, what are you actually going to do? The first thing is to consider just scheduling with the hematologist. They will do and know more than you're going to get from a video like this. You can also get a test done, which was mentioned in the previous video on unsaturated B12 binding capacity. As mentioned in the previous video, if this is elevated outside of the lab's reference range and you also have high serum B12, it suggests an increased production of those binding proteins, those transcobalamins. In this case, your body may be making more of those granulocyte type of white blood cells. That doesn't necessarily mean it's cancer, but it also does increase the chances that it is but things like mast cell activation, mast cell activation syndrome, and other similar disorders can also do this. Polycythema vera, hypereosinophilic syndrome, and cancers like chronic myeloid leukemia, primary myelofibrosis, myelodysplastic syndromes, and acute leukemias are all well-documented reasons for having high B12. But are some cancers and some of these bone marrow disorders more implicated than others? The relative amount of B12 in the blood does suggest the relative amount of transcobalamins. So for instance, with chronic myeloid leukemia, you might have B12 levels that are 10 times the normal level, according to this paper that we're going to look at here in just a second. Whereas with things like polycythema vera, primary myelofibrosis, elevated B12, 
might only be seen in a third of the cases or a third of the patients with these conditions. And this is the paper that discusses some of the relative values of B12 in different cancers and bone marrow disorders. I'll also put a link to this one in the description. But what about these mast cell issues in elevated B12? How high will the B12 be with these conditions? Well, in this paper, they discuss primary hypereosinophilic syndrome which is very similar to mast cell activation syndrome with some differences. In one, there's increased production of mast cells, and the other, there's increased production of eosinophils. Both are actually granulocytes, and in the condition of primary hyper-eosinophilic syndrome, they found that B12 level could be as high as 30 times the normal range. For all practical reasons, B12 is typically not measured in the body beyond 2,000 picograms per ml. So how would you really know if it's 10, 20 times, 30 times the normal range? In most cases, you wouldn't really know. I'm not aware of any lab that tests beyond 2,000 picograms per ml. The main thing to be aware of is that as B12 levels rise, it suggests white blood cells and their transcobalamins are also going up as well. Some of these things with regard to the white blood cell can be seen with this simple CBC, a complete blood count with differential that looks at all of the white blood cells, but it's not always going to show up there as elevated either. So let's be clear about one thing. We can't really use the presence of high B12 as an indicator that you have cancer. However, the higher the B12 is and the more tests you've done that show this, the more concern there should be. As your level goes up and above 1300 picograms per ml, and when it's present like that on more than one test, there should be more concern and more need to get in with a hematologist to have a consultation there. This is in the absence of consuming any B12 in the form of pills or injections in the last six months. The hematologist will be able to differentiate the types of white blood cells that may be involved in your high B12 or if it has nothing to do with that at all. What you should be looking to do when you have an ongoing elevated B12 level is to get that test for unsaturated B12 binding capacity. This test will give you more clarity as to the immune bone marrow side of things. Together, these tests will give you some clues about the amount of transcobalamin proteins that you actually have floating around in your blood. With elevation of both, you should be seeing a hematologist for sure for some deeper testing and bone marrow analysis. Also keep in mind that the transcomalabins come from granulocytes, so chronic infections or other problems that activate or trigger mast cell proliferation will also cause a similar profile or similar result in terms of elevated B12 levels. Remember, there are plenty non-cancerous and benign reasons to have elevated B12, and here's a diagram from that paper that'll help you fully explore some of those other areas of concern like liver, kidney function testing, etc. I also wanted to share with you my book, Don't B12 Deficient, where I go into more detail on not just B12 deficiency, but actually on high B12 and an action plan and some things you can do to actually fix or lower your elevated B12 level. That's in the case if you don't have one of these more serious things. But if you do have one of these inflammatory conditions, mast cell activation, there's tips and strategies on things like that in the book as well. So that's all I had on this topic, the dangers of high B12. If you do have questions on anything in the video, let me know in the comment section. We'll see you next time.